Nested sequences have long been a thing in Premiere Pro, but what are they and how do they actually function? Let's take a look at this thing inside a quick tip tutorial with your boy T-Garden. Jumping into Premiere, let's see what's happening. Internet, welcome back. It's your boy Robert Teagarden. If you're new here, welcome. I post content on a weekly basis on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative. Two videos in one week. Who is he? Also, do you like this new setup with the 35 millimeter prime lens in this kind of thing? A little bit tighter of a shot, but a lot more depth of field. Let's go into Premiere. We'll talk about what nested sequences are. First thing I want to be able to showcase is that a nested sequence is almost like one of those Russian dolls. It's a sequence within a sequence within a sequence. So you can kind of group elements together and utilize that grouping to apply effects and or to nest that particular clip in the same sequence settings that you're going to be having inside of your sequence that your footage may not be aligning with. So like slow-mo clips that you have to put effects onto. I'm gonna give you a bunch of different examples on what nested sequences are and how they function, including some advanced sequence tips that I don't see very many people utilizing. Let's jump into Premiere and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here I have last video that I put out on YouTube and you can see there's a bunch of different things in this sequence that are a little messy for my personal taste, um, but I've also utilized a few different nested sequences here if we kind of expand these regions and you can see what's going on. Now to be very easy and plain, all a nested sequence is, like I mentioned in the intro, is just a way of grouping other elements together and creating a micro sequence inside of your new sequence. So for all of these like pictures that I had that have this little off white background, I can nest these things together and apply effects to that nested sequence all in one. So if I wanted to do it, I could really just kind of grab these four things. I would right click on what I have, go into nest. It asks me to name that nested sequence. And for the love of Pete, please name your nested sequences something that you will remember and something that makes sense. Now, I'm always trying to do this. I'm not perfect about it, but I would utilize my nested sequence and say this is East West Studio Hicks and it'll put them inside of my sequence. And now you can tell that it's changed to this kind of green setting. Now from here, I have all four pictures still in here, but I can add scaling to the entire nested sequence, which is really helpful, instead of each individual clip inside of the nested sequence. So if I go up here, I add my scaling. Let's just say that I wanna do something that's not crazy, just a little modest. And now you're seeing that each picture is scaling inside of that sequence because really what scaling is the nested sequence, not necessarily each individual photo inside of that sequence. And to see if that's correct, we can just double click on the nested sequence. It's going to bring up, as you see right here, the sequence that you created and there's no scaling on any of these things that you see here, right? Cool. So now I'm going to go back to this thing and actually show you something that's a little bit different. Let's back ourselves up a little bit and I can actually create an entire nested sequence with the color mat underneath there as well. So I've highlighted an entire two layers, right click nested sequence and we can put East West Studios mat and it's created both of those things and kind of sandwiched everything down together. And this is really where nested sequences tend to thrive and their ability to have um, multiple elements kind of grouped into one thing. And as you can see now, it kind of makes my sequence a lot prettier and cleaner. Uh, so I tend to do a lot of those sorts of things. Here's another example of this where I had multiple clips, as you can see, that were nested into one particular area but I wanted to apply effects onto the same clip. Um, so I was able to just nest them all together. I use that technique quite a bit uh, and it tends to be pretty fun. There's an example of me not naming it appropriately, but I was in a hurry. I was in a hurry and it wasn't client work. It was my own work, okay? So that's a way in which we can use it. Applying effects to a bunch of grouped pieces of footage at the same time, okay? Now, another thing that you've probably seen a bunch is when you're going to use a piece of slow-mo footage. Now, what I'm using right here, if we go to the properties of this particular clip, 
reveal in project, we can see that this clip right here is 60 frames a second, 59.94. Now, if I go ahead and just in a very crude way, command or control R, I bring up my speed. Let's slow this down by half. And now I have, right, a clip that is in slow-mo. All right, as we're moving in there, nice little slow-mo clip. But let's just say for some reason, I wanna put a different effect. Let's say I wanna put warp stabilizer on this particular effect. Some of you might have actually seen this, warp stabilizer and speed can't be used on the same clip. Well, that provides quite a predicament for us. How do we get rid of it? Did you guess it? You sure did. Let's go with a nested sequence. I'm gonna delete my warp stabilizer. I'm gonna go ahead and nest this sequence. Now, this time what it's actually doing is taking my 5994 that I've stretched half time, and it's going to put a nested clip in this timeline, and it's going to make that nested clip 2396. So it's going to take my slow-mo footage that's recorded at 5994 frames per second, and it's going to make it the same sequence settings that are in my timeline, which is really helpful. Slow-mo clip is the name, and now we can put on warp stabilizer as the game, and you can see it's analyzing in the background and we don't have that error, and now we can see that there's stabilized handheld footage on this particular clip. Not necessarily that I wanted to do that for this one, but there's another way that you can use nested clips or sequences to help in your edits. Now, Another thing that I do all of the time, which is an advanced technique used with nested sequences, is to group a bunch of pieces of footage together and utilize them in the sequence as a new camera. I've actually talked about this in a multicam sequence video that I put out quite a bit ago, uh, where I actually do a picture in a picture. Um, so I'll show you exactly how I'm doing that and a couple different examples of what that would look like. Now in this other video right here, what I've done is I've moved this up to the top. I'm gonna scale myself down and I'm going to move myself to the corner of this particular video. This is actually exactly what I'm doing when I'm talking to you here. I'm going to put an opacity mask on my face. I'm going to bring it down so that all I see is my face. There's a mask right there. I'm going to feather it a little bit and now I can scale this up and we can kind of move it to where we want to be, right? But if every time I see that in my sequence, I have these three layers that are going on, it gets a little hectic and cumbersome. And so what I can do is actually take all of this, including the audio, let's make this audio go back over here, including the audio, go over here, right click again, nested sequence, picture in picture, and now the entire thing gets smashed down into one nested clip. And what I can do is utilize this as an actual camera. So if I go to do a multi-cam sequence, which is another way that we use nested sequences, one second, uh, you can have this be its own individual camera. And you can play with this in a bunch of different ways. I've done it here as well uh, in this podcast edit that we have here, this double up from a virtual guest is actually just a nested sequence. You see right here, if you go to two up, Boom, all this is is just a mat over the top. These two cameras are just nested right next to each other or placed right next to each other. I nested that clip and put it inside the timeline. And now every time I switch to that particular camera, what we're seeing is it being applied in this nested sequence here. I can apply effects to all of these layers inside the nested sequence. And what's important and really helpful to know is that that gets applied to every single instance that I would be cutting for this particular camera or nested clip that's in my sequence. So another really, really helpful thing is that if I do color layers, if I do any sort of effects, if I do any type of like contrast or any of those sorts of things, it'll be applied across the entire clip that's nested. So every time that it's seen, it's there and it's not just the individual cuts, which I would have to go and apply across time. It's a really good one. Now nested sequences aren't just used for video, they can be used for audio as well. Another technique that I use all of the time is an echo effect. I did a video on this a while back too. Um, the way in which we can utilize that is if I take, let's just take this one little thing right here. I can go over and on this side, I can make this particular clip a nested clip, right? 
We can go, we can nest it. We can say audio echo as a nested effect. Now it doesn't look like it's anything different until I click on it. And what I would do here is to say this particular spot right here, let's make two little keyframes, bring this down. And now the nested effect is going to stop audio here but we have the ability to stretch the nested clip further. Give me one second and we're gonna get there, I promise. Just keep paying attention. So if that's where it is, I can go over to my effects. I can use Studio Reverb. I can drag my Studio Reverb onto this particular clip. We're gonna go and edit. Let's just make this thing one big, fat, disgusting room size, huge. Just for the sake of doing it, we'll make it crazy. And what you'll be able to hear is, now nested sequences don't just apply to video, they can apply to audio as well. And I've done a video on the echo effect that you can put on to the end of an audio track uh, earlier on in the channel. I'll link it above here. Let's do that again for a piece of audio here. So let's just take this guy. We'll grab a little piece of it over here. We're gonna take this, duplicate it, move it down. Okay, so we've got this audio area here. <laughs> Let's say that we wanna make that snare drum echo, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, we're gonna go up to nest, we're gonna say audio echo one, boom. You can see that it kind of eliminates the waveforms. We're gonna click right here. It brings up that nested sequence and we know. So once that snare drum hits, we're gonna put two keyframes, bring our audio all the way down, okay? So on our audio here, it goes away. But if we go back into our edit, now we, it goes away there, but what we wanna do is we wanna add Studio Reverb onto that effect right there. We're going to say, we're gonna make it a great haul, turn up early reflections, turn up room size, make this super wet over here. And now what we should be able to receive at the end of that clip is that it just fades away. Now, let's say that the clip stopped here. The fact that it's a nested clip gives me the extra echo on this whole side of the keyframe where there's nothing there for that reverb to apply to. So, and the way that I would do that is I would go back to where it hits right here. I can kind of take the studio reverb off of that side. Right? And so another way of us utilizing to clean this up a little bit. Perfect. That's perfect. So that's a technique I use all the time. If there's going to be a fade to black, if there's going to be a reason for me to stop talking, I just kind of let that audio decay so it doesn't just die immediately. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different reasons why we would use a nested sequence. And again, all it is is just a sequence inside of another sequence. And we can use it both in video and in audio. We can use it to group a bunch of different things together so we can apply effects across an entire area. We can use it to create picture in picture. We can use it to apply different types of effects that will be there in a multicam sequence. There's a ton of different uses that you can have for nested sequences inside of your timelines. What are you using them for? I really want to know why did you click on this video and what is an example of how you've been using nested sequences? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like the video, then like the damn video. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell for posting notifications because it really does help. And if I don't see you in the past year, I'll see you in the future. Dad jokes. And uh, thanks for tuning in for another video with Tea Garden. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.